Hi, James here, and in this video, we're going to be looking again at the Rodecaster Pro 2. I know I'm doing a lot of videos about it, and it's because you guys have been asking for them, and also because there's just so much talk about this device, and it's such an interesting piece of kit, I think, for the audio industry. Specifically today, I'm looking about how you can use it for live streaming. If you're doing um, particularly video streams, maybe you're broadcasting to Twitch or Facebook Live or YouTube or something like that, and you're using a piece of software called OBS. Well, the cool thing about the Rodecaster Pro 2 is you can actually use it to control OBS. So let's find out how. So if you're new to this channel, my name is James Mulvaney. I'm an entrepreneur working within the audio space. I am founder of radio.co, podcast.co, matchmaker.fm and Q Podcasts. So you're welcome to go and check those guys out if you like. But whilst you're here, if you like videos about the Rodecaster Pro 2 uh, or other audio gear, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe. You can hit that subscribe button and you can also turn on your notifications to be notified when I push out new videos like this one, which I release every single Friday. So let's get down to it. As I promised, uh, we're going to be looking today at Rodecaster Pro 2 and talking about how you can use it to control OBS. Now, OBS, if you're not aware, great tool, uh, whether you're broadcasting audio, video, or a combination of. It works on Mac. It works on Windows as well. That's what the thing I really like about it. It's cross-platform, and you can do all sorts of things with it. So for example, right now, we've got it hooked up. So I've got a camera to my side uh, and we've got the feed from the camera going into the MacBook Pro here. So if I press the first button, I've programmed this to change a scene on OBS. So we're gonna switch the scene uh, from the camera, which is set up a Panasonic uh, Lumix GH5. And actually we'll now transfer the feed, video feeds to the built-in webcam. Uh, so this is not the best of angles, but you can see here, um, this is the webcam, which is built into my MacBook just up there. And I can switch back to the Lumix. So this is really cool. So I can toggle between two different camera angles. Now, obviously this is not the best example. Uh, in an ideal world, you probably have your webcam raised up a little bit uh, and you wouldn't have a microphone kind of blocking your face, but it makes your videos a lot more dynamic. And I'd say also, you can even use this if you're actually recording video. So you don't have to necessarily be broadcasting live. You can use the OBS to record video as well. I mean, traditionally, if you look at a TV studio or something, you might have two, three different camera angles set up. Quite often you have someone behind each camera and then you have someone up in a gallery uh, controlling the switching between those cameras. And that's quite how often how a lot of studio productions are done. And traditionally, these video switches are really expensive pieces of kit you know, quite often costing tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. But basically what we've built here is a video switcher, which we can say flip between two different camera angles with a click of a button. And basically I can continue talking to you while I'm doing this. It's not something I need to really pay attention to. Okay, so that's pretty cool, switching between two different camera angles. But what else can we do leveraging something like OBS uh, and the MIDI controls via the Rodecaster Pro? Well, if I hit the third button, you'll see a video starts playing. This is our new podcast.co intro uh, homepage video, which is really cool. And, um, you know, it talks about our platform and how easy it is to upload podcasts. You should go check out podcast.co, by the way, if you're thinking about starting a podcast, little shameless plug there. Um, but not only have I got the video playing on OBS, I've actually now got the audio for the video routed through the Rodecaster Pro. So if I wanna dip the fader down, I can actually remove that sound and also turn it back up. And the other thing I've pre-programmed one of the buttons to do is automatically dim the volume. So whilst this video is playing, if I just uh, restart it again, you obviously hear the sound, the, the background music, um, kind of over the top of my voice. But if I hit this fourth button, it will dim the sound down. And you can obviously hear me much better than you would be able to if I've got something playing in the background. If I hit it again, the sound will come back in. So, there we go, that is exactly how you can use uh, the Rodecaster Pro to control OBS. Now let's dive into how you go about setting this up. Whether you want to control your camera angles on OBS or stream video, the good news is it's relatively easy to set up and Graham from our production team is here to show you how it's done. Firstly, you'll need to download OBS. There's a link in the description where you can do this if you haven't got it already. And from there, we'll need to make sure OBS can receive and understand MIDI signals. To do this, you'll need to download the OBS MIDI plugin on GitHub. And again, the link's in the description. And just to note, this demonstration will be performed on a Mac computer, but it's pretty much the same process if you're using Windows or even Linux. 
Once you download these two pieces of software, connect your Rodecaster Pro 2 to the computer via the USB-C cable and make sure the Rodecaster Pro 2 main is selected as input and output on your device. You'll then need to launch the Rode Central app and make sure to connect your Rodecaster device to the app. As with the other software, the download link for Rode Central is also in the description. It's all in the description, guys. You'll see it there. So if you want to flick between a webcam and camera on your screen, the next thing is to connect your second camera to the computer and download any tethering software the camera needs to act as a webcam. For this demonstration, we're using Panasonic Lumix GH5. Uh, so I needed to download the Lumix tether software for this to work. The other way to do this is to use a HDMI to USB capture card. These are pretty cheap these days. They used to be a bit more expensive. Um, you can easily get one off Amazon. I'll put a link to one in the description again. So let's now load up OBS. The first thing that I'm going to do is set up three scenes. One for the webcam shot, one for the second camera shot, and one for my imported video or media or something that I want to play during the stream. And again, you could have perhaps multiple videos if you want to fire them off too. Now go to source and go to video capture device. This is where you should find your laptop or your desktop webcam. Leave the settings as they are and click OK. That's your webcam scene set up. So to create our second camera angle, to create camera B, follow the same process, but now click window capture. From that, you should find your camera tethering software. In my case, it's Lumix Tether Live View. And finally, to create your imported video a media scene, repeat the process again. Now select media source in the sources window. From here, you can find the file that you would like to stream on your computer and choose extra options like whether you would like it to loop or restart when it is live on your stream. Great, now that's all the scene set up. Now let's connect the scenes to the Rodecaster Pro 2 using MIDI triggers. Go over to your Rodecaster Pro 2 and set up three MIDI triggers on your smart keys. This can be done by clicking on the cog on the top right side of your Rodecaster screen and then selecting smart keys. Cycle through to an empty slot and click it, then select trigger MIDI. Change to momentary and then click the green tick. Do this three times so you can set up three scenes as three separate buttons. And now we're gonna go back to OBS, click on tools, then down to OBS MIDI settings. Select Rodecaster Pro 2 as your device and go over to the configure tab. Click listen many at the bottom left and then click a smart key on your Rodecaster. OBS should have picked up a channel and a note control. You can then program this to do whatever you want in OBS. So for this demonstration, let's change the action to do transition and then set the scene to scene one or whatever you named your webcam scene. Repeat this process three times and you will have three smart keys that will control three different scenes on OBS through your Rodecaster Pro. Finally, if you want to set up a fade in and fade out, and go back to your Rodecaster Pro 2, click an empty smart key, choose mixer, and then scroll over to fade in and fade out. You can choose the seconds you want to fade to last for, and make sure to select exclude host so it doesn't fade you out too. That's everything set up. So there we have it, the Rodecaster Pro 2 is such a powerful piece of kit. Uh, not only can you use it for mixing your audio, but you can also now use it for controlling or mixing your video too in conjunction with a third party piece of software such as OBS. So one of the things I'd say is obviously don't let what I've just showed you today limit your imagination. Quite often, you know, people will go out and buy all sorts of different pieces of kit to control both their audio and video. So you might have an audio mixer like the original Rodecaster, but then you might be using something like the A10 Mini um, by Blackmagic to control your video. Well, the cool thing about this is you can kind of bring everything into one um, with the right software. And I think that in itself presents some really interesting opportunities. I'd also say there can be other software controls with Rodecaster Pro 2. Um, as I say, MIDI is kind of a general format. It's used by lots and lots of different software. In fact, I'm going to be doing a video showing you how you can control DJ software uh, with the Rodecaster Pro 2 as well. But let me know in the comments below because I'm curious to know if you've purchased one of these, how are you using it? How have you configured it? And what sort of software are you using it to control? Uh, let me know in the comments or maybe you're going, thinking about going out and purchasing one. Um, I'm curious to know uh, your thoughts on this device. As I say, I think it's really revolutionary. I think some of the features that Rode have um, been working on and adding into this device make it an incredibly capable bit of kit. Thanks very much for watching this video. I'll speak to you soon. And remember to subscribe and really appreciate a big thumbs up if you found this video useful. What makes the difference between a successful radio station and a failed project? 
Well, after working with tens of thousands of broadcasters over the past 15 years and helping lots of people start their own radio stations, I see the same mistakes being made time and time again. So what I've done is I've put together a guide called the Five Step Radio Startup Checklist, which really covers everything from concepting your radio station to marketing it. And this guide, I believe, will make the difference between you having a successful venture with longevity and creating something that doesn't quite hit the mark. Go and grab your copy now for free at jamesm.com slash radio. Just enter your name, your email address, and I'll send it over to you straight away. You're going to find it really useful. There's tons of information there which will help you with concepting and launching your brand and bringing it to market.